Welcome to our next edition of the Foundation Speaker Series. My name is Karen Misanti, and today I am very excited and pleased to have with me Liz Mims. She is the Director of Client Services at Dress for Success. Liz oversees boutique, mobile, and client services delivery and community outreach for Allegheny, Butler, Fayette, Green, and Washington counties. Before serving in her current role, Liz was branch manager for three of the four Dress for Success Pittsburgh branches. During the global pandemic, Liz led the creation of the organization's Virtual Connections Resource Center, which provides a network of resources to empower women in their holistic development. Liz thrives on connecting authentically with the women who dress for success Pittsburgh as clients, donors, and volunteers. Liz, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. I appreciate you all reaching out. This is great. Absolutely. So I've learned a little bit about what you guys do, um, but I know there's a lot of people out there that may not have heard of you before. So tell me a little bit about what Dress for Success is and, and specifically what you do for the organization. Okay, definitely. We have actually uh, been around in Pittsburgh. Last 2020 was our 15th year. So it was kind of a crazy anniversary year. Uh, I got, you know, overshadowed by a lot of important things though. So uh, now, you know, we're working on our 17th year in Pittsburgh, but uh, the organization itself is worldwide. So Dress for Success Pittsburgh is a part of a worldwide global affiliate. We're a global affiliate. Um, we call them affiliates. And uh, we're in about 23 or 24 countries. That changes because we have people that start affiliates in new countries all the time. Um, most of us are located in uh, North America. And uh, when we say Dress for Success Pittsburgh, uh, the cool thing is that for an affiliate, we actually cover not just Allegheny County. So people think Pittsburgh, um, they think maybe just Allegheny County, but we actually work with women across five counties out of four physical locations, uh, along with two mobile boutiques. Um, so we serve Allegheny, Butler, Green County via Washington County. So Green is served more on a remote or mobile basis, and then also Fayette. So it's a really unique affiliate in that way. I, I love it. Um, you know, I wish we served even more counties and one day maybe we will, but to be able to have outreach in five counties is great. Uh, and I always tell folks, everybody that has ever worked with us, you know, as a, as a participant, as a team member, board member, community member, you name it, volunteer, uh, we all know it's always more than the close. Um, I always say emphasis is on success. Uh, and there's no period at the end of that. Uh, it looks different for every single woman. And we are really grateful to be somewhere on her journey uh, to hopefully help her define success on her own terms. And we play a little part in that, um, but I think it's an important part. Yeah, that's the interesting part because immediately when I heard of you guys dress for success, and as you said, the emphasis should be on success, not necessarily the dress because your name implies that you're just dealing with how they dress, how they look, what they wear. But right. you guys do so much more than that. So maybe talk a little bit about, more about that. And I know with COVID, as we all did, yeah. we all had to adapt. Yes. We came up with the the um, the virtual offering. So talk a little bit about what that, what that is as well. Yeah, for sure. So to preface, uh, and you already mentioned this, I've been with the organization now about six years. I've been in nonprofit work for 20 years. So I started right after I graduated IUP in 02. And I can't believe it's been that long since uh, <laughs> I've been doing this. And this is definitely, this last six years has been the most transformative, uh, I think for me personally and professionally. Um, and we have an amazing CEO, Tanya Vokes, um, and she really, I tell her often, but probably not often enough, how um, I, I, yes, I'm a team member, but I know firsthand having left a, a relationship and during 2020 had a lot of family losses and got my own place for the first time. Financial independence, what we try to encourage women to believe in themselves and make choices for their joy and determine success. Like I, I live it, I've lived it and I've lived it because of the work we do. Like I know what it means, it's not just the clothes. And so when women come to us initially, they all come to us via a referral, it's one sheet of paper. There are no, there are the incomes guidelines and restrictions, you know, we remove that red tape because some women, many women come to us with the referral from a nonprofit, any 501c3 can refer in any of the counties we serve. 
And uh, once we get that referral, it's really just her contact information and what kind of uh, clothing support initially does she need from us. We also ask on the front end, do you need help with resumes? Because we have volunteers through our volunteer manager, Jade. And if they say yes on the front end, I would love some resume or cover letter support. We can also provide that as a part of their service too. So we ask that on the front end um, and the kind of clothing we provide, once again, you hear dress, so you think it's dress clothes, but no, if, if, if you work in uh, environmental services at UPMC, you need green scrubs. That's success as our non-slip shoes. You know, it's not a suit. Uh, if you're working for PennDOT, you probably need high visibility wear and some composite boots. That's success, you know? So we provide all of that. We raise funds tirelessly. We, Tanya writes grants and we, we just are out there telling people once again, emphasis on success. So a lot of generous donations, mostly are the business casual that also women need, but there's also, we learned that, you know, we already, we always knew that, but when COVID hit and we didn't stop operating, we never shut our doors. We just did everything remotely. We would drop things off, uh, meet her in a McDonald's parking lot, for example, if a client couldn't get to us or mail it to her house, drop it on her porch. We still do that for clients that can't get to us. Um, but it was a mostly scrubs and it was mostly non-slip shoes and it was mostly casual clothing for women who then had to do things like, you know, you don't have childcare, you need an income. They had to quit their jobs and they had to do things like DoorDash because you can have your kids in the car with you. You can take your grandbabies in the car with you and go to Aldi and then do grocery delivery. You know, um, women are essential. <laughs> they are, in my opinion, the most essential humans. Um, but that's just my humble opinion. Um, but when we talk about the workforce, we saw that the folks that were on the front lines in many of these fields are women. So, um, a part of that that came with COVID was then also not just supplying the clothes, but do you need other resources? Do you need to get connected now that you don't have employment? Are you looking to like LIHEAP? Do you need assistance with um, food security, nutrition benefit, you know, SNAP benefits? And we have all these community partners who are so great because then we can call up Chris and say, hey, we need to sign someone up for SNAP. She doesn't know how to do it. And there's a direct link there. Or Jeremiah's place with crisis childcare, you know, it's the only place that does it. And so it's the resources too. That's why we, our tagline is clothing, connections, confidence. Wow, that, and that's so, incredible. Yes. And when you feel connected, I, I do believe it, it, it def directly impacts your feeling of confidence that, okay, I'm not alone in it. I'm not alone in this. I don't have to figure this out by myself. I am not the only one struggling. I am part of a, a community of sisters that and we're in this together. And I think that that directly, I know it impacts my confidence to feel sure. connected. Yeah. And, and, and I think I, I read some of the information you gave to us ahead of time, yeah. how, what, what they look like, what, what you wear when you go to work in the morning, if you're dressed up and you feel, you feel good about yourself, you feel good about your day, but if you don't have anything or you, you know, you're, you're very limited in what's available to you, it really does affect your confidence uh, as a person. Well, yeah. And so many women just on the basic level of she can't start her job until she has certain specialty clothing. So then you get into the cycle of great. She got the job. She's beyond qualified, but if she can't afford three pairs of scrubs, well, how can she do that? She doesn't have the job. She didn't start. She didn't get a paycheck right. or they'll deduct it or, you know, and so even that piece, we hear that so much from clients, just, Oh my God, I didn't, I wasn't ready. I didn't know how I was even going to go my first day. And that alone was like, you walk in there. Yes, you are dressed to the part. You belong, you belong, you belong. And a few of uh, the clients, it was last year specifically for some reason that were working um, in the field, like it, not necessarily with PennDOT, but doing very similar things. And they needed like the high visibility vests, hard hats, the boots. And a few of them would either text or call or email and just say, they felt in a male dominated field already very, uh, very much a lack of confidence that can they do this kind of work in the trades, even in some cases. And it was really cool to hear they're like, I, I dressed the part. Like I walked in there with my boots, my nice jeans, my high vis stuff. And I'm one of them. I belong here. I'm going to take up space here. And the clothing was a part of that, the start of it, you know, it's not the end of it. They determine that, you know, but it was really cool to hear. So yeah, that confidence piece, my goodness, I think that makes a world of difference. 
Yeah, and I know I know you guys are are also doing. I know you've talked about um, getting referrals and things like that. But I know I know you also do work with young people because it's important for them to learn. You know, high school students, let's say, which mm -hmm. is what we deal a lot with. And uh, I know you do some virtual things with them. Uh, I saw something you did recently with Range Resources. Yes, and, uh, that's my that. favorite. Christy Kramer is my girl. Yeah. yeah, she's our girl too. So <laughs> maybe talk a little bit about how you're also trying to work with high school students um, in, in the organizations. Oh yeah. So, you know, we say we uh, empower women. A, we're always uh, assessing and redefining and understanding what does it mean to be a woman? You know, that's not definable. And so that alone, and then when you talk about um, age, <laughs> I mean, we've I've gone to uh, uh, residential programs for young women who are in the system, 14, 15 year olds in middle school, and they, one example, they needed clothing, um, dress like dress clothing, to do a presentation for their senior year. Well, they're in the system. They're in, you know, uh, they don't have adults that can take them shopping or get them stuff. And so they, we were asked, can you come? It's about 13 young women. Talk to them about, just talk with them. I even don't want to say talk to them. Talk with them. That's why I love um, the young people. That makes me sound so old. But that's why I love talking with younger people. Uh, I learn so much and they're so beautiful. And I, I just never, I always feel like kind of 14 and a half in my head anyway. I always feel like angsty and like unsure and like, little insecure, but also excited and all the feelings. And so getting to talk with these young women and hear their stories. And um, there was a lot of identification there. I'd gone through some very similar things and as a young person and being able, I think, hear sometimes from an outside person like us, the things that the people that are, you know, they're in care with are telling them all the time. It's no different than your own kids. When you're like, I told you this 27 times, you saw a YouTube person say it and all of a sudden it clicks. Okay, whatever, uh, <laughs> that's fine. Um, but it was really amazing to see these young women who were navigating not just only being um, in the system, but trying to do well in school, um, trying to build friendships, all the things. And then, you know, for them to hear about like, you're normal, that's fine. You're strong, you're resilient, you're resilient. And um, then dress up <laughs> and look at themselves and be like, oh my God, I look so good. I look like a boss. I look amazing. Um, that was something that was specifically education based. You know, they needed to feel that way. It was just one presentation, but guaranteed, I think the impact was beyond just that one presentation, you know? And so when we work with folks, um, once again, with Range Resources presentation on Monday, Monday, oh, I'm capping off this week. So great book ending. It's so great this work week. Um, talked with uh, the young women there about, um, of course, confidence and what the heck does it even mean and why is it so hard to have it but easier to see it in other people and not in yourself and all these things that are so normal that at 43 years of age i'm still i haven't figured any of that out um so that's normal <laughs> it's fine <laughs> but a lot of the work with young people is the confidence piece yes we provide the clothes for sure we go to city high we've done mobile events there we obviously we go to colleges and universities um we go to the uh ctc's um in in the different regions in the different counties we serve too uh and i love going to the ctc's because you see you have young women going into into the military, into culinary and all the things, nursing. And we get to, I, we just learn so much. It, every person is like their own world. And it's just like exotic travels, I swear, just to be able to go and talk to different people. So a lot of it is the confidence for, for young folks, for us. Wow, that, that's tremendous. Um, and now I know that you're in the Pittsburgh area, but uh, you know, people that watch this may be anywhere. They could be throughout yeah. the state of Pennsylvania or whatever. So if somebody wanted to try to get in connection with maybe a dress for success in their area, how, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, so actually our, so every dress for success affiliate has their own website um, that, but it is all very much of a, which is very different than our virtual connections resource center, which I will touch on that. This is a dressforsuccess.org website. Um, so even actually I don't do this sometimes because we have so many, we have o over a hundred affiliates worldwide. I don't even know. I'm like, well, I wonder, hmm, is there one in Michigan? I don't know. Um, so I literally go on dressforsuccess.org and you can see with who we are, there's up on the left side, it says find an affiliate and it's a little search bar and you, and it get, breaks it down first by the country. And if you just choose North America, you'll see 
all the cities and it takes you directly to their page and um the build the, the makeup is so different you know some dress for successes are run entirely by volunteers um some have a huge staff some have a small staff um it, it really depends on the the affiliate itself which i think is so beautiful um and obviously we we cover those five counties uh so if you're in this you know region we probably are close to you sure absolutely so tell me a little bit more about your Connections Resource Center. Yeah, so that was um, something I wanted to do for probably as long as I've been with Dress for Success because so much of what we do, right, once again, is paper flyers to women. We have like a hiring, had a hiring now bulletin board, like so clunky, but it's what we did. And then 2020 rolled around and uh, Tanya had the idea, you know, she's like, she, she started our intern program at Dress for Success years ago and she, had heard that there were some folks that were losing their in-person internships because of COVID. And she said, well, let's hire, how many do you need for client services? How many do you need communications? Let's hire some interns and they'll all be virtual. And it was kind of cool because then we could get folks that didn't live in Pennsylvania even, you know? Um, and then, you know, we, it was a quick turnaround. I think we might've had three weeks to recruit, bring them on. And in the meantime, we were creating work plans and I had five interns. So, and one of them was in high school. Lily, she's in, she's at uh, Penn State now, but she's like, she's the greatest. Um, she was a high schooler and she's like, look, I know you're looking for college kids, but I'm awesome. So I think I can do something. And she definitely did. So with those five virtual interns who are still some of my favorite humans and they're brilliant, um, we worked together and I said, hey, so this is what we're gonna do. Um, make things more accessible. I wanna create a website. No idea how to do that. I literally had to Google it, it's fine. Uh, and then we wanted it to be covering everything just like we do from the essentials of looking for work. What does that breakdown look like? Resume, action words, everything that, you know, I kept saying like, think if this was your best friend back in high school and she was like looking on this site, what would help her? If this was your mom and she was looking to get back into work, we would always look, make it very personal. And so we, it became our virtual connections resource center and it's all based in connections. So, you know, connecting to the essentials, job search essentials, a whole breakdown, including free resume template downloads, cover letter template downloads, word clouds that they put together of action words to put and to look for. There's videos on there and then there's connecting to community. And every single county, if you click on Allegheny, it will bring you a drop down of uh, at least 14 or 15 categories, whether it's substance abuse and recovery, uh, LGBTQIA plus resources, uh, social activism, uh, mental health, all those things, childcare in the county that you're looking for. And it's for all five counties. And it just goes on and on. It's uh, There's one on connecting to confidence, I think, and it's all body positivity things. So there's a connection to National Eating Disorder Association. NIDA has a, an amazing uh, body positivity, almost like a self-care uh, workbook. And you can connect to that. Uh, one of our interns uh, found a bunch of body positive playlists on Spotify and Pandora. And so you can connect to those playlists. It's it's incredible. And then there's even like the his connecting to culture and cultural competency, things like, you know, like natural hair in the workplace and the, the fight that still goes on for that, the Crown Act and um, history of women in pants in the workplace. Like it's, it's, it's so, I love it. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> there's things on there that I still am like, didn't even know we're on there, you know? Um, so it's a great one-stop shop, I think. Um, and I've used it, I've used it for various reasons. Um, but it's a great one. Well, I'm using it for a cover letter just because I realize I don't even have one. You know, just to have one in your back pocket with your resume at all times is really important to have that foundation. So I'm currently using it to build my cover letter, you know. So, yeah, it's uh, I can uh, the, the link is DFS as in dress for success, PGH virtual dot org. So DFS PGH virtual dot org. Um, and you can access that too by going to our regular website, but it's awesome. And this was our, and we, we released it. We worked on it all summer in 2020 and it, we had like our official, like virtual tour of it and release in October, uh, or it might've been November. I apologize, November. So it was, um, I'm really proud of it. It's out there and she's, she's doing her work. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. That isn't it incredible how 
organizations like both of ours um, really had to find a different way to do our jobs or to reach our, our people um, through a pandemic. But what, what, when we've come out at the other end, hopefully we're better organizations, we're better people. We found a better way to connect with them. Mm -hmm. um, I know in our case, there's many things that we've changed with our programming that we will keep forever as a result of the pandemic. There were good changes and it sounds like for you guys, it's exactly the same thing. I love it. I, that's so good to hear too. That's great to hear. Yeah. What you all do is really important. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you. One, one last question, because we've talked a lot about the young women out there. Um, are, is there any place that a young man could go to to get information on to help him uh, through a situation or are there organizations that help the young men in the world? I don't believe that there are, at least in for Pittsburgh, an equivalent to anything like Dress for Success. Um, I do know that then some of our other affiliates, they may partner with um, an organization, you know, um, as far as the clothing, yeah, I mean, you have the free stores now that are expanding, which is incredible. Um, and we love the free stores. And so we always, if a man calls um, or somebody, you know, that needs what we can't provide, um, we direct them there in terms of the, the essentials, the clothing component. Um, and then there's even though, you know, there are organizations that may not be all encompassing with the clothing, but plenty that support the, you know, workforce development in general. Um, and I was actually, there's somebody who's moving to Pittsburgh, a young man, and he is friends with someone who's volunteered with Dress for Success in another, in another state. And so she and I are actually currently working, I'm looking at Big Berg. Uh, Big Berg is a great resource for all things Pittsburgh. And so trying to look up some things for her that could possibly help him um, as he re-enters and looks for work. Um, so there are a lot of workforce development options, which are amazing. And I actually, once again, thanks Google, I Googled workforce development programs, but yet, you know, and of course it gives you career link, which is phenomenal. Um, but there was ones I hadn't heard of. So, uh, and uh, as well as trade schools and new century careers, which was another one that this young man is actually really interested in as well as Bidwell. Um, so, you know, free opportunities to get licenses and certifications in the workforce that are invaluable. Yeah. Liz, thank you. Thank you so much for the information. I've really enjoyed speaking with you. I've learned so much about what you guys do. I love what you do. If there's any way we can ever partner together, we'd love to do that. But thank you oh, for the absolutely. information and sharing it with our audience. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Girl, you know what? We're going to stay in touch. And I think there's a lot of potential for this this connection with what you're doing with youth. And count me in. I, I can't get enough. It's It's so good. Thank you so much. If, if anyone wishes to talk with Liz directly about anything that we've discussed today or to connect with her, feel free to do so. Her contact information will be provided following this interview. I know she would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. It. Thank you so much.